Ninka, I'm, uh, you're in Holland right now. How are you going? Yes, um, pretty okay, I guess. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Guy. Now, <laughs> nice to be here. You are a master's student who is doing a thesis, writing a thesis on deep adaptation. Am I correct in that? Yes, yes. Yes. Okay, and so I want to have a conversation with you about deep adaptation, and then yes. I want to talk to you about the Titanic. <laughs> Great. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> sounds good to me. Yeah. Okay, so for those of us out there who don't know what deep adaptation is or where the idea came from, do you want to give us a little intro to that? Sure. Um Yes, I guess um, I've been looking at deep adaptation now for a few years, but uh, first more on the sidelines, sometimes participating in some workshops uh, and later on now for my thesis. And I guess um, what I'm finding is um, that deep adaptation in a way is a sort of lifestyle. So, um, there's a professor, Jem Mandel, he was a professor in sustainability. And in 2018, after like many years working in the sustainability um, sector, he, he came to a point uh, talking to climate scientists thinking, are we actually gonna, gonna do this? Or are, we, are, are these systems, uh, are, are we unable to stop sort of the trajectory, the, the environmental degradation, the, the climate change that is happening? And are we, are our systems maybe gonna collapse? Um, like he didn't post that as a certainty, but he did say in that first paper that, you know, it, it might not be so far out there for things to start unfolding. So he was really making the case for not just um, using mitigation, but really starting to look deeply at how we're adapting to climate change mm. and how we are adapting in our own lives and how we need to maybe ask ourselves, are we living the way we want to live? Um, now, from that can, of course, come a more sustainable behavior in the end. So in that way, deep adaptation, I feel speaking to many people now in, in sort of the deep adaptation <laughs> movement, because sort of a movement appeared from it, no? There's uh, there was this so Jem Mandel wrote a paper, but that wasn't um, published. But then he published it, I guess, in its in its own terms, or he and that got sort of viral. Like many people in the world read it, and I've interviewed about twenty people, and I've spoken to uh, more people, just sort of um, uh, in the process, and and basically all people say when they read that first paper, they felt recognition. They felt like, oh my God, somebody saying, oh, might it be too late, you know? Somebody uttering these words, because it seems to be that uh, there's so much focus on mitigation of, of climate change and so much focus on, um, on whether, whether, how fast things are gonna happen and whether we are in time and that it's five to 12 and la la la. And, and nobody seems to be saying, well, is it actually, you know, five past 12? Are we, you know? Um, I think a lot has changed. This was 2018. Things are moving so fast. No, we're 2022 now. And, and COVID also happened. That wasn't there at that time also. And actually there's been recent research uh, which says that many people, at least in Europe, that research has been done, that many, many people are collapse aware and are believing that there's some kind of collapse that, that will happen. And that was about 60%, I think, in that research. I can't quote who, who that research was, sorry. Um, I would need to look that up. But I think 20% of those people actually thought it was going to happen near term, um, which is still a really big number, I think, you know, if you if you would ask people on the street. So many people say we're collapse aware, especially I think now even more with the whole thing and, you, you know, the war in Ukraine happening yeah. uh, after COVID. Um, 
the, the price is rising. No, people are, and and there's this massive hunger now. Of course, as 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 you are aware, probably also in in Africa, like like worse than ever, sort of. Mm -hmm. And and so another thing that people in the deep adaptation movement say is that uh, collapse is already happening. It's not like it's 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 going to be somewhere in the future. Yeah, but for yeah, many people yeah, in the world yeah. today, it's already happening. Yeah, yeah. And what I've also find found out, or what I feel, is that for many people, when they are aware of, my God, maybe we're too late, or even if we're not too late. Uh, the damage to the earth and to the to the environment is so big and and the adaptation needed from people to live with higher temperatures is going to be so big mm. there's a massive grief happening to people yeah. and then in that process i think the deep adaptation movement is like a container that provides um, a really a group of social care so it's really a caring group of people that want to when people become collapse aware, not that it has to happen. Uh, by the way, I think it's also very important, as I mentioned, that nobody, almost nobody mentions human extinction. And there's there's like, a, a mis I think, a misunderstanding of deep adaptation that goes around where, where um, it's sort of put in the human extinction box. Yeah, or, or yeah, yeah. And, and many people, the people I met, it's also important to say that I wanted to know what deep adaptation was for them yeah um and for those people they're not thinking about human extinction they're just thinking about the difficult road ahead basically for humanity yeah. and for other species and how do we thrive how do we how do we sustain ourselves and others and how do we care for others who come to the same conclusions and and who, who might get into pain whether physical mentally uh yeah, so so I think the movement offers a space where people can freely talk about these subjects, where it's not suppressed, where we cannot say, oh, we cannot talk about doom or gloom because then, you know, we will get too negative. Yeah, yeah. I felt on the contrary, people in the movement seem to be more active and seem to be more willing to change okay. because everything is allowed, because they are allowed to talk their deepest fears, their deepest worries. And nothing is brushed under the carpet or said, oh, we need to have more hope because... Because if we if we go into difficult stories, then then we give up or something. Yeah. Where where was where does uh, spirituality fit into this? Would you say? Well, I think that is mentioned uh, mm. uh, for sure as a as a not per se because spirituality is always a difficult word. No, it, it's mm. uh, you can fly off with the angels or you can mm. uh, have your hands in the earth and and create a garden. Uh, it's yeah. it goes <laughs> between those things. No, what is spiritual? Yeah. But I did feel that, or I did hear people say that spirituality was a part. Uh, not for everybody I interviewed. For some people, they didn't. That wasn't necessarily why they came they, they they felt it was more factual or more practical way of living and really hands-on hands-on how do i create gardens how do i mobilize my community for change for adaptation adaptational change also but there was the, the the spirituality seems to be a component as in i would say that is in restoring our relationship with the natural world yeah. So, yeah. so making it bigger than just humanity, but but our connection with with the world, no? Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's sort of like the wake up call that calls upon us to um, recognize our innate spiritual connection to nature that we've lost lost through our Western culture. Yes, it's exactly that. And and a lot of um, in the deep adaptation movement, there's a there's a forum, and you can uh, there's a lot of workshops or I, i'm not sure workshop is the word but there's a lot of like uh, meetings it, it has been also because of covid not a lot has been online and also because people live all over the world there's a lot of online meetings mm -hmm. um but some of them sp specifically have a more spiritual connection or a more connection to how do we restore our our deeper um feeling for the earth and in that way um through that we might be able to create more care also yeah and in a way uh, it's like joanna macy you know they use a lot of i think from the work that we connect from joanna macy um who's really about 
uh, this love that we can have, you know, for, for our surroundings. And that love is spiritual, if you, if you would call it like that, no? It's, it's making, it's not mechanical, it's not technical, it's not economical. Mm -hmm. it's, it's sort of life force, it's what sustains us. And I think the transformation that deep adaptation also is hinting at is, is, is going back to that, going back to, to that species that we were and that we are originally in connection with everything. Now it's like Gaia theory also. It's, yeah, yeah. We're connected to everything. And if you can contact that connection yourself through meditation often helps or through deeper inquiry, mm -hmm. mindfulness practices. Mm -hmm. There's also a quality that can appear in life, which I'm hearing from people in the deep adaptation movement that actually gives them sort of courage to go on, even, even though it's difficult times, and also gives them a broader sense of meaning and of care. Yeah. Um, but also for themselves, no? a, a broader sense of meaning of, um, yeah, of just having a play in this web of life, basically. That yeah, that, that term yeah. meaning comes up a lot as, a, as one of the sort of entryways into a conversation about spirituality is that, you know, spirit, one of the spiritual aspects is what we see as the meaning of our life, whether we think it's been imposed by others or something that we've created. And, and I understand how having a deeper awareness of collapse and what's necessary to survive it would help to stimulate people to find meaning in their life, to be yes. You know, yes. Have meaningful lives, helping others and sharing the news and speaking and so forth. I mean, it's it's when somebody contracts a, a very serious illness, no, or even on a, on a like the, like that you hear from doctors that you that it's not curable anymore. I mean, people go through a, a huge transition from that. Um, not not all people, of course. Yeah, yeah. And I think also that's important to say that um, I think people uh, that that feel drawn to deep adaptation also have have dealt with um, are looking at these issues in themselves. Can I cope? Can I cope with difficult news? And if I cope with it, how do I respond to it? And how do I how do I care for others who might not be able to cope with difficult news? No. Yeah. yeah um, so yeah. I'm not sure if, if deep adaptation, it has to be, if, in my opinion, it has to be brought very gentle because if people are not, you have to be emotionally capable to hold yeah. really difficult news. And if you're not like somebody who's dying of a disease, you could stay in denial, of course. I think yeah. that's where a lot of humanity or Western humanity is at least in, in some part of denial because of the inability to cope with difficult news and, and pain yeah. basically I, and look that is part of part of our, our culture there's a, <clears throat> a phenomenon called the cassandra effect which is something that's inbuilt into humans that we have a we are disbelieving of bad news and we don't like to yeah. go we don't like to hear it and so the bad news builds up and up and up and then breaks through the door and then of course like you're saying that some people that just aren't uh, able to um, emotionally uh, accept what yeah. we, what you and I would accept, having a scientific understanding and having read deeply into, you know, what's projected and how the structure is working, um, that we can, we can, we we've gone through the phases of it that we can deal with it yeah. now. Where you yeah. bring the average person in from the street and you sit them down and impress upon them that you know what you're talking about and then tell them this stuff, you know, meltdown. Um, yeah, and I yeah. think that's where what you're saying is that the deep adaptation movement is a social safety net for people to have those conversations. Exactly that. It's a social safety net. And it's also a place, if you're in grief, mm. uh, in a way, dealing with difficult emotions on your own is almost impossible. You know, mm. it's, it's really, that's like, um, how do you say, um, that's like, that's torture. Um, if you go through difficult emotions, be it collapse emotions, be it, I mean, now people, Europe with this enormous heat wave, people are getting worried, they're afraid, they're, they're literally um, in physical or mental despair sometimes because of, you know, worried about the future, young people being worried about the future. And if there's no holding space for all these emotions, if you're not held, 
I mean, we've most people have gone through grief in their lives. If you have to do that by yourself, that work, that is just that's torture. It's, it's you need a, a loving space that holds you. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that deep adaptation really wants to offer that, and also that that's possible. And what I, I I want to mention is that I've been looking and comparing at the latest IPCC report on adaptation. So I've been comparing that with what I'm seeing in, in happening in deep adaptation, what I'm reading and what IPCC is, is telling about deep adaptation. And for me, what is so striking is that where maybe the IPCC was sort of catching up still to that point, they use now a lot of the same language that is actually used in deep adaptation. So the the IPCC is talking about, we need a transformation. We need a change of meaning giving. We need um, to listen to indigenous people. We need to listen to other ways of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Uh, We need to, it's it's really calling for a transformation of our societies. Mm -hmm. And it's also in a way, it doesn't put it bluntly, but it does say if we don't change our current trajectory, then then there is a possibility of societal collapse. So it's the language is almost, you know, the, the words emotions are maybe not so much used in the IPCC because it's, it's still sort of stark. Um, yeah. Uh, scientific written no yeah, yeah. Um, and 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 I guess science doesn't it yeah but even yeah I, I just found that striking that they seem to be meeting each other mm. and um, that IPCC seems to be almost calling for groups and and um, for people to start to adapt and to to take that on board and to do something with that. And they, they have a huge section on mental health also okay. uh, on how, how we need um, supportive structures to help people there. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Hey, listen, um, I've actually got a, there's a deadline on my screen here. This thing's going to turn off in just short yeah. a minute. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So can we just wrap up in, in a minute? Um, yeah. And yeah. Um, uh, I, I, actually, let, let's just wrap up now and we can come back and have another conversation. Um, yeah. Um, just by saying thanks very much for that. When are you supposed to be submitting your paper? <laughs> End of September. Oh, okay. So it's coming up soon. It's coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I haven't <laughs> taken any more of your time. You need to be pressing the key. No. Doing no, your that's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's a, it's a massive progress and and process. Yeah. Actually, while finishing the, the 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 important thing is that I was I felt that through this process I'm living deep adaptation. Yeah. And through all yeah. these talks, I have new insights myself, yeah. and I'm actually putting them into the world, which is so interesting. Yeah. So it's like living this deep adaptation is living living with this constant change and grief, but also um, putting more care in the world around me and for the yeah. humans around me and for the animals. And yeah, yeah it's yeah, really interesting. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good, good work. Excellent, okay. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank okay, you, I'm gonna close this off now and um, yep. come back to you shortly. Bye.